Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, Jude, peace. Uh, scripture references out of Jude 1, verse 2, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. So we're going to focus on the Greek word for peace, irene. And per Strong's Concordance, it's a state of national tranquility, exemption from the rage and havoc of war. So there you have it on a national level. Uh, as far as peace between individuals, harmony, concord, security, safety, prosperity, felicity. From Jesus' perspective, uh, it's the way that leads to peace through salvation. Uh, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot. So it's the blessed state of devout and upright men after death. Um the term irene, peace, as you well, I probably should stick with the Greek, is used 92 times in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul frequently introduced readers of his epistles with a greeting of peace. And below are a couple of examples. Uh, Romans 1, verse 7, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. A uh, second example would be from 1 Corinthians 1, verse 3, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this same greeting of peace, he's, it's noted in both letters to, to the Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, Colossians, both books of the, to the Thessalonians, Titus, Philemon, and both books of Timothy. So he makes the point, Paul makes the point repeatedly as an introduction in his epistles. God, Father, Son, and Spirit, is the source of our peace. So as believers in Christ, we are called to be at peace with others. So seek peace with your fellow man. Do your part. And there's nothing any of us can do about another's attitudes, beliefs, lifestyle, words, actions, you know, we're not going to get along with everyone. Uh, but as for the individual believer, pursue peace in relationships. So, you know, those two examples, Romans 12, verse 18, if possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Uh, Matthew 5, verse 9, these are Jesus' words, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Now, Jewish people will use peace as a greeting or farewell to others. And the term is shalom in the Hebrew. And that's defined as completeness, soundness, welfare, safety, health, prosperity, quiet, tranquility, contentment, friendship. You know, and that's of human relationships with God, especially in covenant relationships. So shalom is used 237 times in the Old Testament. Now, the first time it's used in the Bible is in Genesis 15, verse 15. And so this, you know, you want to dig into this a little deeper, I'd recommend reading the 15th chapter of Genesis. And the context of that is, as God was revealing his covenant to Abram at the time, it would become known as the Abrahamic covenant regarding his descendants and their future. And part of God's promise is peace. Abram was in a deep slumber and God was communicating to him in what many might consider a nightmare. And the specific reference to Abram was his future death and burial. That's that's the context of peace. So God the author of peace revealed the concept to humanity in darkness, slavery, oppression, terror, death and fear. And this is how God chose to introduce Peace. Now, the verse itself, uh, Genesis 15, verse 15, As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You will be buried at a good old age. Now, the, the dream is all about going into bondage to Egypt. Uh, he was placed in a state of fear and darkness prior to the dream. So, God demonstrates peace in dark times. Um you know, and then lastly, you know, the language of peace in the New Testament, um, it's many things, but one of those is it acts as a military guard. So peace crushes rebellions and it protects hearts and minds. Jesus is the answer, embodiment, and fulfillment of peace. And so in the end, peace 
<clears throat> or Jesus, wins. Romans 16, verse 20, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. And in closing, Philippians 4, verse 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So if you guys uh, enjoy reading that, please feel free to check out paulthepoke.com. <clears throat> also, this is a series that's beginning with the book of Jude. We're going to break that down verse by verse. Click over here on the far right, find Jude, click on it. Everything that has been written will be under Jude. Um, and then also, if you want to follow along on the blog, you can click up here on the blue bar, type in your email address, and you'll receive a notification every time um, a new post goes out. So appreciate you guys listening. Hope you have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.